Good afternoon, good morning, good day, whatever time of day it is, it is time for today's talk. And I'm Marty G with today's talk. And I've got another really good friend of mine that we've been trying to get this going on forever. I've got Corey. Corey Birkin, how are you? Doing amazing. Glad that we are finally doing this. We, we, we've we been talking about this for at Ever? least a year and a half. Yes. A yes. year and a half. I mean, yes. seriously, but you're a busy man in high demand, so I get it. I get it. I've just kind of just waited <laughs> Well, I'm glad that my assistant's assistant could get you on my calendar, so... <laughs> Love it. I, I'm, I'm just glad you've had time. I've always wanted to get a chance to chat with you since you've been at the Sparrow Club. And look, I've been wanting to get, have this combo. Even though we've kind of been seeing each other, we had a once a month date with the LES uh, leadership, Eugene Springfield. But I definitely want to know more about you and, and, and the Sparrow Club. So welcome. Thank you. Looking forward to looking forward to chatting. So, you know, let's let's talk a little bit. Let's jump right in. So um, tell me, what, what what is the Sparrow Club? Let's just get right off, right out of the gate with it. What is it? Sure. Let me give you kind of the 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 thirty thousand foot view, kind of the big picture of of kind of who we are, what we do, what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. Um, so, kind of the 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 cliff note version, if you will, is that we we really partner with families that have a child in medical need. This child is anywhere from newborn to 17 years of age was some kind of life-threatening, life-altering medical circumstance going on. This child becomes our sparrow. Once we have a sparrow that we partner with, then we get local schools, elementary school, middle school, high school, private school, alternative school. We get a school to adopt a sparrow in like a friendship kind of way. And then we get what we call local community club sponsors. These are typically businesses, but also sometimes individuals in the community that just believe in the um, the power and positive impact that Sparrow can bring to students. So once we have a Sparrow, a school, and a sponsor lined up, we come into the school and we do a school-wide presentation sharing that Sparrow story and the medical journey that, the, that they have been on. And then that story really becomes a catalyst for changing youth culture from the inside out through compassion, connection, and empathy. And the way that we do that is that we put together a really neat video that is kind of intertwined with pictures of the sparrow that kind of uh, show in a picture form kind of the story, uh, their, their medical journey that they've been on, intertwined with words that kind of explain to the students what the sparrow has been going through or, or, or has faced. Um, And then once we've captured the hearts, the minds, the attentions of the students through these powerful stories of these sparrows, um, there's a call to action. There's a challenge that we give to the student body. And that challenge is, here's how you can help your sparrow. The currency for sparrow clubs is community service. That is how students help their sparrow. The challenge that we give to them is that we say for every hour of service that you do, for every charitable act that you do, it unlocks a portion of that community-sponsored money that then goes to the Sparrow family. So it really does inspire and empower students to see beyond themselves, to see the needs of those around them, realize that they can give of themselves to help Sparrow families like this family. This is actually one of our newest families. This is actually up in the state of Washington. Uh, mm-hmm. There's actually, a, it's a small community. So there's a small group of schools that are rallying together, uh, inspired by Hazel's story uh, to serve others in their community, knowing that those service hours are turned into money because of our incredible community sponsors, our business sponsors. That money then goes to families like this to help for whatever their financial needs are. So that's kind of the that's kind of the big picture, if you will. Along with that, there's kind of a, a theme or an additional message every year that we like to share with kids. And this year's theme is compassion is greater. I mean, our world, our 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 communities, our schools needs more compassion. They need more empathy. So kind of the the, the question that we're posing to do to students this year is compassion is fill in the blank. What is compassion? What does it look like? Um, so that's that's kind of the big picture of, of who we are and, and our, our mission and our message, if you will. That's a really big, beautiful mission. I mean, I, I hate to, to minimize it, but it kind of comes out to it takes a village. It really does. <laughs> right? It takes a yep. village. So well, go ahead. 
I was just going to say that that's kind of, you know, there, there's, there's so many layers to this. There's so many uh, ripple effects of, of the impact uh, that it can bring to students. And, and what you touched on right there, it takes a village. What's really neat is to come in. And part of what I share with students is that I believe in the potential greatness that lies within them. And the reason why I say the word potential is because it comes down to a choice that they get to make as an individual to see beyond themselves, to see beyond the, their mobile devices and, and to see the, the needs of others around them, to see the needs of the, within their community and realize that they can rise to that occasion. But one can accomplish so much. But if that one is linked to one other, it doesn't become an addition factor. It becomes a multiplication factor at that point. And then that inspires more people to get involved. And now you truly have this village effect. You truly have this community effect where people are working together to accomplish some great things. Amazing. You know, and I, I, I maybe I'm just not paying attention, but it, it, this is a really great, or how did you find this organization? I mean, literally, I, I have not heard of this organization before uh, hearing from you. So yeah, so the, the organization has been around for over 25 years. My connection with it is that I, uh, at the time, I used to hold a, a, a corporate uh, position for Black Rock Coffee Bar. So I was working up in Portland, where their headquarters was based out of. And Black Rock uh, has been a longtime business partner with Sparrow Club. And just because of the past uh, opportunities that I've had, it, it was just a natural fit for me to kind of become the, the business partner liaison with Sparrow. And BlackRock really wanted to see the Sparrow program expand into new regions, states, and territories that they were growing into, that BlackRock was growing into. So I got to devote a lot of my time working with the Sparrow team and helping them to make new connections in new communities. And in doing so, I fell in love. I fell in love with the mission and the message. I joined their board of directors. Uh, then eventually got to serve as their board president for about a year. And then the executive director of Sparrow Club uh, reached out to me this last June and said, hey, I want to bring you on our team. I want to bring you on staff. So I joined the staff in June uh, as their donor relations manager, um, but also kind of as a new region developer. This, the Sparrow program is throughout the state of Oregon, except for right here where we're at. There's kind of been this gap on <laughs> I-5. And the reason why is because it takes boots on the ground. It takes somebody that's in the community that's building those relationships, making yeah. the connections, finding those Sparrow families, uh, you know, establishing a rapport with schools, uh, building those business partnerships. Uh, so it's kind of a dual hat role that I've been able to play. So that's how I got introduced introduced to the program. Um, and like I said, it's been around for 25 years. I want I want to share a story yeah. um, real quick. This is this is the origin story of Sparrow. Like this this is where this is where the inspiration came from. Uh, back in the er early mid 90s, there was a, a a family up in the state of Washington, the Leland family. And the dad was a middle school math teacher. Mom stayed home with the kiddos. And they had a little baby boy named Michael. He was two years old and diagnosed with leukemia. And they were given just a matter of really weeks to receive a bone marrow transplant in order to save his life. So they reached out to their insurance provider and the insurance provider unfortunately denied the claim because they were not on the insurance program long enough for that coverage to take effect. So hospital was like, no big deal. We only need $175,000 to do this $200,000 procedure. And uh, uh, the, the dad, Mr. Leland was like, I'm a middle school teacher. I don't know if you know this, but we don't make a lot of money. Yeah. My wife stays <laughs> home. And they were truly in desperate need of a miracle, just hoping, praying for a miracle. Well, unbeknownst to Mr. Leland, he had um, a, a student in his adaptive PE class. The student's name was Damien. He was a seventh grader. And Damien did not come from a, a, a great social status or economic status. Um, uh, really, unfortunately, he, he was bullied uh, quite a lot in school. But in the midst of that, Damien had such a huge heart of compassion, and he knew what was going on in his teacher's son's life. So while Mr. Leland was at school, he gets a phone call from Damien's mom. Says, hi, this is Damien's mom. We're down at the bank. Damien wanted to take out his savings account to help your son, Michael. And before he could say anything, she hangs up the phone. Moments later, they arrive at the school. Damien comes straight up to, to Mr. Leland, and he says, Mr. Leland, 
I want you to know that you've always been a good friend to me. Uh, I know what's going on with your son. I wanted to do something about it. I don't want you to make a big deal out of this, but here I wanted to help. And he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out a wad of 12 $5 bills, $60, his, okay. his entire savings Maybe. account. Yeah. yeah. And so Mr. Leland is holding this wad of compassion, just tears going down yeah. his, You're his face. Cry, dude. Okay. And then <laughs> Damien, head held high, just turns around, walks away. Well, Mr. Leland tells the principal what just transpired. And the principal was like, Damien did that? He's like, yes. The next morning, they shared it with their staff. By the end of that school day, the entire staff and student body heard not only about what was going on in little baby Michael's life, but they heard about what Damien did. And they were inspired and compassion sparked and it ignited like a wildfire throughout that school. Other students were like, we want to do something. So they started knocking on doors, doing whatever they could to raise money, collecting cans, mowing lawns. The local business community got involved and started giving to the students. And day after day, this principal would show up in his school office with just piles of cash showing up on his desk. The local media caught wind of it, did an amazing story. And in four weeks, Marty, over $220,000 was raised for this family. That's, now that's viral. That's real viral. That's So they go in, they wow. pay cash, they... They have this bone transplant done. It saves Michael's life. He is a full grown man now. I think he's 30. He lives over in Redmond, still very connected with the organization. Um, but it was just not long after that, that the Leland family was like, that was, that was too powerful of a movement that transpired by the act of one seventh grader. Yeah. Like we can't oh, recreate boy. raising $200,000 every four weeks. <laughs> Although that'd be cool, but yeah. what can we do? And what can every student do? Not every student comes from an affluent position to be able to give financially, but every student can give of themselves. So that's where Jeff Leland, the dad, came up with this brilliant formula, if you will, of a sparrow, a school, and a sponsor. So that way, again, it equals the playing field. Every student has the ability to participate because every student has the ability to see the needs around them and realize that they can give of themselves to meet that need. So that was what inspired Sparrow Clubs back in the early 90s. Uh, right. Since then, over 1,300 Sparrow families have been impacted. Over $8 million have been raised. And countless, countless of students have been inspired and empowered uh, to do these charitable acts of service, knowing that it makes a difference in their community. It right. makes a difference in their Sparrow's life. But what these students find out is that it makes a difference in their life. It changes them. And we have story after story, I could go on and on, of as inspiring as that origin story is of Sparrow Clubs, there are equally as inspiring stories from these Sparrow families, but also how these students just step up, being inspired by their Sparrow to step up in different forms of leadership uh, within their school and in their community and really bringing about an impactful and lasting change. Wow, that's just absolutely 100% humbling, inspiring. I'm like, wow, I'm like, you're gonna make me cry on a Tuesday. I thought my Monday was terrible. Now I'm all inspired for a Tuesday. Well, let me, let, like, let's, speaking of cry, I, this, this is just, this is one story that has personally impacted me. We were over yeah. in Boise um, doing a Sparrow Club launch over there. And the Sparrow's name was Jorge. He was a 15 year old young man on his, uh, his second round of cancer. And we show up and our, my, my, my coworker, Matt, he's our executive director. He comes up to Jorge, gives him a big hug and Jorge kind of winces in pain. His whole body ached because of what his body was going through to try to fight this camera cancer. Like it caused him physical pain to have this embrace. Well, we, we, we do the whole uh, uh, presentation. We share his story. He's standing up in front of the student body in front of the student body. And then afterwards, you know, the, the students are dismissed, but he's standing down at the bottom of the stage and all of these students begin to line up one by one, giving him a hug. And here's what impacted me, Marty, is that I stood there knowing that with it, each embrace, he was it caused pain. Jorge pain. Yeah. But he allowed them to give him a hug and he embraced them back. And the principal was standing right next to him. So this principal got to see countless of students come by and see this human to human connection. 
take place. I mean, I'm standing on the other side of the stage, just bawling. I mean, I was just, it was just so moving for me to see that kind of connection and that kind of, uh, that's, human, that's humanity. That, that I mean, that's, that's humanity just at the rawest personal exactly. level. You, yep. you just don't see that nowadays. I and mean, that's nope. the kind and of that's, stuff that inspires me with COVID and all this stuff that's going on just to hear like human stories. It's like, you don't see that stuff anymore. You don't hear it anymore. Yeah. And that's what we think students need. They 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 need to they need those human stories. They need those human uh, connections and those interactions. Now that this is this is what the this is what the world needs. I mean, seriously. I mean, honestly, I I, I uh, former news guy. I spent a lot of time in actual real broadcast, no, local and network news, and I had to leave because I saw editorial was taking over and cable was taking over, and you know the human interest just doesn't make the top of the news anymore. And this is the kind of stuff that our world needs. You know, how do how do we spread the message? I mean, how do I help? How 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 can we help? What's the best the what best way we can help you? So that's a great question. You know, the kind of how I put it is, how can you help me spread compassion? Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, you know that there. You know, as I as I endeavor to um, you know build the relationships that are necessary to bring this program here to our community in the Eugene, Springfield, and surrounding areas. There's those three elements that are needed. One, Sparrow families. There's families out there that have a, a kiddo in medical need. Again, that's newborn to 17 years of age with some kind of life-threatening, life-altering, you know, medical circumstance. There is um, a, a, a medical application that we have them fill out. We do conduct a family interview uh, because we want, you know, the, the, not every family is really, to be honest, a good fit for the program uh, because our focus is not money. Um, and understandably families that are going through these things are drowning in financial need. Uh, but really, you know, a family that has the courage to share their story, the sparrow that has the courage to share their story. I mean, the way that we present these stories, they are not a charity case. They are not a cause. Mm -hmm. Our sparrows are champions of change. And that's exactly how we share their stories. So it takes a family that really sees the big picture in bringing about an impact and a change for students. And then what they receive is a huge emotional support from these schools that they, they, these schools take them in as their own. They become a part of that school family. So need sparrow sparrows. Um, secondly, um, working on just building those relationships and connections with our local schools. And the best way to do that is through people that directly know school administrators, right? The principal or assistant principals in the schools, that, that can say, hey, like, you need to connect up with Corey. You need to give him 20 minutes to share about this program. Now, obviously, COVID is not doing any favors. Right. Schools are maxed out. I yeah. mean, they're like, we don't want to add more onto our plate. And right. we yeah, understand that. Well. We get right. that. This program has been built up over the years in such a way where it doesn't add more to the plate. It only draws out what is already being done in schools. So the doing part, there's no additional doing. In fact, a lot of schools already have community service as part of their curriculum. So they're already doing like the doing part. They're already doing the service. Right. Now we can just say, let your students rally around one, one person, you There's know, around one There's thing. a choice for that community service. Yeah. Okay. So connection, connections with schools is, is really what I'm working on. And just having those conversations now with schools, like not with the expectation of like, hey, let's start this program tomorrow, but hey, let's have this conversation and maybe next school year, this is something you want to introduce for your student bodies to be inspired by. And then third, community club sponsors. Again, those are our business uh, partners that financially sponsor the program. And we have two levels of giving, if you will, with that. Uh, we have a silver level, which is $5,000. That fully funds one program. Or $10,000, which is our gold package. And each one of those, we built a great um, uh benefit partnership. And that's exactly how we look at these community club partners, that they are our partners. Uh, sure, we'll take a check, but we really want to engage in relationship. We're a highly relationally driven organization. It's all about creating connections. Um, so that's where our community club sponsors come into place. So those local community uh, businesses that are like, hey, we believe in our community. We want to make an investment in our community. So those dollars go right to a family that's living in this community. Those dollars go right to impacting students that are right in this community that then turns that into community service. Um, so though, again, those are the three elements of, of so it's not just money, right? Sparrow families, schools, 
and sponsors. So yeah, get you involved, not just give a check, but let's also get, exactly. you, get you involved and signed up. That's fantastic. Yep. And the best way to get a hold of you with that is that just either give you a call, drop you a line. What's the best way to do that? Yeah, best way is is, is for, for locally here, for me personally, is is directly to me. So Corey at sparrowclubs.org, C-O-R-Y okay. at sparrowclubs.org. I'll make sure I put that information up as well. I mean, geez, I could sit here and talk to you all day about this, man. I'm feeling like inspired, <laughs> definitely. I mean, it's it's touching. I mean, I think about for uh, how long I've known you and you know, everything that you do in the community house, how heavily and how uh, uh, how much how positively you impact everybody. You, just all the energy you put out. It's like, is it the caffeine that keeps you up, or is it just all the <laughs> <laughs> you, you put out so much positive into the community it's just it's amazing uh, what you do so thank you for all that. i appreciate that marty and i i really i really appreciate you man just sharing this platform and just what you're doing uh, as well to uh again you know promote stories i mean stories are impactful they're empowering they're life-changing and uh, i just appreciate you my man and just opening up this platform to have this opportunity Hey, it's my mantra. I said, uh, COVID is not going to stop the world of relationships for me. I just got to right. find another way to do it. That's right. Um, we can't do it face to face. And uh, I, I tell people for me, actually, uh, I actually I think I, I, Zoom is a, is a problem. I hate it. Okay, I'll just be flat out honest. <laughs> I would love to be like face to face with people. I'm very touchy, feely and tactile. But I tell people the cool thing about doing video meetings is people are strangely more present in one-to-ones on zoom you know because yeah, literally yeah. you're not rushing off to another meeting you're not checking your phone literally you're there i mean it's just like you can't hide like you're on camera you're there you're exposed like you get yeah that that, that is definitely a silver lining and yeah and just speaking of that face-to-face -face, i mean we've had to take a face-to-face -face program and make it a virtual program i mean especially when schools were not in session, we still had to find a way to engage students and share these stories. So we had to develop kind of a virtual uh, program so that it still takes effect. And just like you said, <coughs> you know, COVID can't, COVID can't stop relationships and we believe that COVID can't stop compassion. If anything, it needs more of it, so. Fantastic. All right, well, I'm gonna hit you with something I didn't prepare you with. All right. <laughs> I never tell anybody about this. This is the new segment that I add to my show. I call it, Let's get real. So let's get real. 3,000 questions. Ooh, I like it. I actually picked three questions for you out of my 3,000 questions, Corey. Well, you're not going to ask me all 3,000 questions? I was ready for that. Really long show. <laughs> <laughs> Question 2,999. <laughs> all right, here we go. Um, this one, I think, this is a this is a throwaway question based on your uh, time with BlackRock. Yeah. What is your perfect pairing for coffee? Ooh. Well, my morning always consists of always two eggs and toast and black coffee. That's every morning for me. Okay. But I think it depends on the coffee. So you know, I I, I was in coffee there for a while. Uh, did the BlackRock thing? I was always a black americano kind of guy. Okay. Um, I think it depends on how you wake up. I mean, there are some times, Marty, where I wake up with a sweet tooth. So it's got to be like, it's got to be coffee and, and some kind of pastry, okay. you know, whether if that be, uh, an apple fritter, but it has to be warmed up. Oh yeah. I mean, to me, that's the only way you can have an apple fritter if you're going to have one. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. But I'll tell you what, we think of coffee only in the morning, but a cup of decaf at night with like a slice of pie. Like, come on, mm. <laughs> that's going to prepare you for nap time. <laughs> that's what we're gonna have Okay, I like it. All right, uh, question number two. What do you daydream about? What do I daydream about? Well, <clears throat> I, I honestly daydream about building a larger platform of influence. And here's what I mean by that. My wife and I have had the incredible and blessed opportunity over 21 years of marriage to really build relationships and help other relationships out. So when, when I daydream, I daydream of us and we're actually working on building this platform called Relation Communication. And really the whole idea is that we just share our story. We share our experiences. 
and just kind of share maybe some some insights, some tools, some resources that we've learned along the way to positively impact other relationships, whether that be intimate relationships or friendships or business relationships. Um, so that's something that I've been daydreaming about quite a bit lately uh, of just, you know, what does that look like? Um, and then beyond that, uh, my biggest daydream of all time is uh, being a professional baseball player. Nice. Okay. What, what position would you play? Uh, I would play for the LA Dodgers because okay. they're awesome. Okay. Um, and position wise, I, I played middle infield growing up, but my okay. last year of high school, I actually was our second catcher. Nice. Okay. So whenever our first catcher would have to pitch or if we had double headers, I would catch. And I loved playing that position. You're in on every single pitch. Yeah. So, yeah. And you kind of lead the team as a catcher, from what I understand. Yep. That catcher yeah. kind of leads the team. Cool. All right. Last question. What are your bad habits? <laughs> 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 Wait, who's watching this? <laughs> uh, I, I, but yeah, it just depends, I think. <laughs> uh, Before I post it. <laughs> bad habits. Uh, Procrastination. Okay, my, my subscriber base on my YouTube channel isn't that high yet, so you're <laughs> bad habits are procrastination and uh, yeah, yeah. probably numbing out too much on social media. I need to, I need to, I need to trim those things down and allow some more uh, other uh, beneficial things to fill those times. I hear you. Yeah. When I was in college, my roommate and I, we thought we were so. Uh, profound we came up with a statement with procrastination we're like dude procrastination is it's a 15 letter word <laughs> it's actually 15 letters so yeah. <laughs> all right buddy um well i definitely appreciate the time um i'll definitely put all your contact information in the uh contact in the notes for the video um, thanks again for taking the time to be on with me. I'll see you. We have a once a month date with LES, so I'll see you at the next class. Yes, and uh, yeah, well, depending on when you're seeing this, it could be tomorrow. Yeah, could have been last week. <laughs> um, but anyhow, thanks again for being on. Thank you, sir. You bet. Say goodbye. Bye. Black denim need a slim fit. Same people that I flex with be the ones that I'm in the gym with. I'm a living legend, you a dead cause, and I'm dead. No, I'm dead, right? Leave it early, but I'm here night. Long and short to keep the head right. Teed up out in Malibu, got sand all in my good shoes. Press a with the pessimism, but I only came for the good news. I am the show that they came for. Hitting the target I aim for. We've been discussing the contract. Just tell them they get what they pay for. I am not with poverty. Really, it started to bother me. I need the yacht with the property. They come with the view that you gotta see. Came up from the basement, hit the rooftop with a passion. Bad with some good credit. In a good sense for the fashion Dope blowing with the left hand Gripping with the right hand Over share to the airport I'ma hit you back with my flight land I'm in the mood for a switch I hit the function, hit the rose to the